I have a piece of history inside my studio. It's this. It is uh, concrete or asphalt from the Nordschleife. And touching this piece gives me the goosebump. Knowing that vintage car or race car has passed perhaps on this exact spot. And Nordschleife has played a big role and actually still is testing the brand new fastest cars. Approaching a vintage Porsche is to approach a breathing li living soul. It is built on feelings, history, stories and passionate driving. It's a pure Porsche. This particular car, the 911S from 1970, has a particular love story behind it. It was actually sold in new in Germany for the first time and it actually had an accident in Germany. The car was then exported to Sweden where it was restored. The first user in Sweden used it as a daily driver. I mean in the 70s driving around in a 911 S as a daily driver. That must have been spectacular. I think that was I mean, a much, much dynamic experience than driving a 911 today. After a few years uh, as a daily driver, the car needed some more care. A friend of mine actually bought the car to renovate it and to finance another Porsche project. And the car was sold when he was done to a, to a, a lady that gave the car to his husband as if third is a celebration present. She must be one of a kind, giving a 911S to her husband. More or less 40 years later, the car has not changed owner. And the gentleman receiving the gift continues to drive and preserve the car, passing well over 300 thousands of kilometers. She's beautiful, isn't she? Remember this is the lines, the shapes we all are referring to more than 50 years later of its birth. Ferdinand Alexander Porsche, eldest son of Ferry Porsche, was responsible for the design. The Gloria around the 911 does not only contain the design. The very heart is the flat six combustion engine that has given the driver true pleasure for decades. And I think this is the heart. I th love this 2.2 liter engine when I drive it, when I, when I feel it, yes, because that's what you do with vintage car. You connect so hard with the engine, the, the, uh, the um, uh, mechanic injection system that you had in these old 911s, actually this injection system is the same mechanic engineering performance that you have in the 73 RS, but they are something special. It's hard to understand and describe it for you viewers, but it is a feeling of of feeling the nature, giving the, the engine oxygen to be able to perform in a such a way that, that it just gives you a smile on your face. For me personally, the 911S is a very special model, perhaps one of the most important. Let me explain why I have this feeling towards the 911S. I think the S model put the base foundation for the track focused car like the RS introduced in 1973. 
the EMT model was uh, more focused on daily use than the S model. The camshafts was uh, different in this particular engine, making it rev much more, and all the power and torque was on the more, let's say, more active driving range of, of, of the engine performance. And the customer loved it. And I can just imagine how family Porsche was seeing their sales number climbing on the S model that were more driver focused. And I think they liked it. They liked that they sold the car, that the customer appreciates it, adding more and more attributes towards driving. Anti-sway bars, uh, ventilated disc brakes, etc. Making the platform for the Porsche track-focused car to be born. Listen to the sounds. Yeah, you cannot hear anything, but listen, I take my right hand and just put it on the gear lever, moving it right and left. And the sound, the connection starts even though the engine is shut off. You put the ignition on, you feel the oil pumps, no, fuel pumps starting. You put the clutch down and you start up the engine. For real, that's great. And then into the very first gear and yeah, we are on. We all are on. And the, and the gear shifts. You're not, you're actually not moving your arm back and forth when you shift gears in the 911S from the 70s. You're basically inside the gearbox. And the engine of this car is with the, uh, let's say, more performance camshafts, making the engine go alive after 5,000 revs. Oh, and it is alive! Ooh! My gosh! I mean, it's not, yes, it's not a 718 Boxster GTS performance. No, not at all. But it's so connecting. 917 steering wheel combined with the magnificent instrument cluster with a revometer in the center lift your eyes just an inch and you will feel the silhouette of the 911 with a nice extra headlines in the middle Ooh, ju just to sit in this car, experience it. It is a treat, it is a big treat. Middle of the road It's just a feeling of a distant melody unknown I was doing fine I minded my own business Till the day you took me home You came into my life Like a sweet embrace Swept me off my feet And made me whole again You came in my life I wanna see your face Never will I be Be the same again Kind of get a love-hate relationships when it comes to the French CB extra headlight as this car has. I think the design of them are as rustic as the entire car, but I kind of having difficulties to decide if I love them or hate them. I have seen a displacement of one and two pairs. When they have two pairs, there are one pair mounted on the hood, as in this example, and one in the air intake, just in the side of the main headlights. And I've seen rally cars having the two pairs mounted on the same time. I think if I owned an early 911, I would definitely try to get hold of these and have them mounted on the hood. And with the 911S, the Fuchs wheel was introduced. 
These particular wheels are an inch wider than the original. The owner have the standard wheels together with the standard calipers in, uh, in, in his garage. But I think it is so beautiful. I mean, doesn't matter which year I have looked at a Porsche or I looked at these wheel designs, they are still one of the most beautiful wheel ever designed. The sad thing though is that this is one of just a few Porsche designs of the rims that actually are spectacular. I think many of together with me would agree on that these are one of the most beautiful rear mirrors ever designed. Unfortunately on the modern cars today there are so many regulations on how large a rear mirror needs to be that I hardly believe that this kind of beauty design we will not see for many years to come. You couldn't be anything else but impressed of the handling of such an old car. It is no doubt about it that, that the uh, Porsche family built that car for driving only. That is a trademark that you see all through in the Vantage 911. It's all about smooth, 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 smooth and lightness on feet and hands to really get things going. Don't stress in the gears, take the times. Absolutely. The 911S is definitely spot on. There are not much happening in the interior, but I like it. Sometimes I get a feeling with these early Porsches that we need a proper steering wheel. In this case, actually the owner has retrofitted a replica steering wheel from the Porsche 917. Mm, love it. Anyway, steering wheel in the center, perfect seating position, perfect distance between the steering wheel and the, ge and, and the gear stick, rev counter in front of you, drive. And suddenly someone realized that, wow, we need a speedometer and we need a clock and they just throw it in, making place whatever there was room available. But I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Also, this car was fitted with an air condition that is so rare on European cars. And the inner center mirror was actually introduced in a 1970 model as a new feature. Imagine new feature, a rear mirror. When the 911 was introduced in 1965, quite fast it got the reputation of being tail happy. Porsche tried to sort it out by reducing the weight in the rear of the car, making the crank and the gearbox case in magnesium. And perhaps that was the magic of the 911, that it wasn't the easiest car to drive, but perhaps the most entertaining. Driving a vintage Porsche or owning a vintage Porsche, it is a privilege. It it's, uh, also comes with a lot of respect and a lot of responsibility to preserve the history. But preserving the history is not about putting your car in the garage, treating it as if it was an, a stock exchange financial paper. No, you need to drive them. That's what these two vehicles has in common, even though it's 20 years between them. Both owner drives their car. The 944 on my left side is actually competing in Michelin's Porsche Slalom Cup, and the blue 911S has done over 200 laps on Nürburgring. That's how you should enjoy the Vantage 911s and the Vantage 944 or all Porsche Vantage car. Dry them. If not, then my recommendation is to sell them to Porsche Museum so everybody can enjoy the art.
such a beautiful car. Do I really have to return this car? <laughs>